Captain Marvel was made to be a quote, big feminist movie. And comments by Brie Larson have some people going Hulk smash. This is America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Did Rotten Tomatoes change their website because of a backlash against Captain Marvel? This week is International Women's Day, a holiday we owe to the Soviet Union. And really, they did so much for women's equality, like making sure women and men were equal, leave poor and starving. And what better way to celebrate March 8th, International Women's Day, than with the U.S. theatrical release of the feminist Captain Marvel movie. And no, I'm not calling it feminist just because it's about a female superhero. Captain Marvel star Brie Larson was the one who said, I had a meeting with Marvel, and what we discussed was they wanted to make a big feminist movie. By the way, you're pretty much required to see this movie if you want to understand what happens in the next Avengers movie. And it looks like many of us do feel the deep and abiding need to see how the next Avengers movie resolves, to the point where we're analyzing Lego sets on Reddit in case they show what happens in the movie. All I have to say is, the handsome, witty, bearded one better not die. And yet, despite the eager anticipation for the next Marvel movie, Captain Marvel itself may be in trouble because the greatest villain Captain Marvel has to fight is not Thanos, it's the Trolls. And while I wish I was talking about some wonderful Avengers Hobbit fanfiction, I'm not. That would be awesome though. Imagine the Hulk smashing some trolls while Thor lays the hammer down on some orcs and Hawkeye finds out his dad was a Hobbit. Just throwing some ideas around. Also, Elrond obviously gets the Infinity Gauntlet. Anyway, back to the trolls. Before a movie is released, Rotten Tomatoes allows users to say if they want to see a movie. And as you can see, only about half of users wanted to see Captain Marvel. And then it dropped to 27%. The good news is Rotten Tomatoes has now removed that ratings feature entirely, so I'm sure the movie will do great. The president of Rotten Tomatoes wants you to know this change had nothing to do with Captain Marvel. It was just a coincidence. So anyway, why did so many people say they didn't want to see Captain Marvel? Well, it turns out it has a lot to do with comments made by Captain Marvel star Brie Larson. In this interview that was part of the Captain Marvel promo tour, Larson was asked what themes she wanted to explore in the movie. She said, intersectional feminism. But that's not why people are mad. They're mad because they had to look up what intersectional feminism means. Just kidding. No one cares what it means. People are mad because at an award ceremony by the organization Women in Film, she said she felt like the pool of film critics was overwhelmingly white and male and didn't do a good job representing other groups. 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Less than a quarter were white women and less than 10% were unrepresented men. I do not need a 40 year old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. Well, considering how A Wrinkle in Time did in theaters, I'm not sure it was made very well at all. Anyway, Larson also clarified that she does not hate white men. Am I saying that I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. Which to some guys sounded kind of like, yeah, she does. So that, combined with her comments that Captain Marvel is specifically a big feminist movie, well, that has led some white men to be pretty upset. That, plus some other things Larson has said about men in the past. For example, this Twitter thread from 2017 where she said she was upset that a man who she smiled at asked her for her phone number. And when one man responded that she should have just politely said no and moved on, Larson compared it to women being blamed for sexual assault. So is Larson a man-hating feminist who wants to kick white dudes out of the press pool? 
Well, like everything I talk about on America Uncovered, it's complicated. Larson's speech where she mentioned A Wrinkle in Time actually had nothing to do with the Captain Marvel movie. She said that stuff nine months ago. And A Wrinkle in Time was actually targeted at young women of color. However, Captain Marvel is not the same, which partially explains the backlash. Captain Marvel may be part of a strategy to expand the Marvel audience to include more women. Just like Wonder Woman successfully expanded DC's movie audience to an astounding 52% women. But that being said, most Marvel movies, and action movies in general, still have a majority white male demographic. Data shows that the audience for a recent Marvel movie was by far more white and male than any other group. So Marvel hopes to reach more viewers now by expanding the number of female and non-white characters, by making movies like Captain Marvel and Black Panther. But Larson feels like this diversity is not reflected in the group of movie critics. In the specific context of Captain Marvel, she said in a recent interview with Marie Claire that she wanted more diversity. She said, I started paying attention to what my press days looked like and the critics reviewing movies, and noticed it appeared to be overwhelmingly white male. Moving forward, I decided to make sure my press days were more inclusive. In fact, for that interview, she personally selected Kia Brown, a freelance reporter who writes about pop culture, disability, blackness, and womanhood. Not only is Brown a woman of color, she also has cerebral palsy. Brown described her interview with Larson as game-changing. Now, it's great that in this specific case, Larson chose Brown to interview her. And in general, it's good if press pools can reflect the diversity of their audiences. But a lot of guys felt like what Larson really wants is to exclude white men for the sole reason that they are white men, some of whom took to Rotten Tomatoes to say they weren't going to watch Captain Marvel. That is before Rotten Tomatoes removed that feature, and they were all called trolls. Now to be sure, some people did leave obnoxious comments on Rotten Tomatoes, specifically about women. But it seems strange to lump everyone who has a problem with Larson's views on race and gender, or don't want to see Captain Marvel as trolls and misogynists. And since the controversy, Larson has tried to do some damage control, saying that she doesn't want to exclude white men. It was headlines that were completely taking you out of context. I, I mean, it's hard for me to comment on that because I don't, like, I don't know what the headlines were or yeah. what was said or what I said or what people think that I said. Um, all that I know is, is like, I'm, what I'm looking for is to bring more seats up to the table. Yep. No one's getting their chair taken away. There's not less seats at the table, there's just more seats at the table. Now, if Larson is talking about how she personally wants to give women and people of color more opportunities than they might otherwise have, that's one thing. But there's a difference between saying that people should be given equal opportunities regardless of race and gender, versus saying that people should be given certain things because of their race and gender. And that's often where the conversation goes these days. It reflects a view that some people's opinions are more or less valid, or they are more or less deserving of things based solely on their race or gender, etc. And that goes completely against the spirit of what a great man said 50 years ago. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Brie Larson was probably not trying to be racist or sexist. In her mind, she probably thinks she's just being more inclusive. But some of her comments about white men do reflect a popular line of thinking in our country, where it's considered okay to say, let's take something away from this group because they're white men, and instead, give it to a group that has historically been oppressed. It reflects a view that society is divided into the oppressed and the oppressor. And you definitely don't want to be the oppressor. And if you're not personally an oppressor, you definitely don't want to be a descendant of an oppressor. The problem is, if you keep on looking at things this way, eventually everyone is an oppressor. Come and see the violence inherent in the system! Help! Help! I'm being repressed! But fundamentally, this attitude doesn't solve problems of racism and sexism. Instead, 
it continues to judge people based on their race and gender. And that actually drives all of us further apart. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! I feel like the room has a scene for every situation in life. And that movie was made for a very narrow audience. Tommy was so. Anyway, there's also a lot more to diversity than just skin color and gender. We all have our own unique points of views and experiences. Frankly, our society would be better off if we all treated everyone better and tried to give everyone equal opportunities, instead of forcing an outcome that favors one group at the expense of another. So, what do you think of Brie Larson's comments? And will you see Captain Marvel? I mean, I gotta say, I'm way more of a Wonder Woman guy. That movie was great. Although I suppose that some people think my opinion on that doesn't really matter. After all, I'm not part of the target audience, which I assume is Amazonian warriors created by Zeus to protect mankind. And before we wrap up, I want you to know that America Uncovered relies on viewer support through the crowdfunding website Patreon. For as little as a dollar an episode, you can help keep this show alive. And as a way of saying thanks to our patrons, you can send me your questions and I'll answer them on the show. Here's one. Zlatan Horozovic asks, how many fast food meals do you consume every week, Chris? On average, zero. I prefer to make my own food. It's much healthier and less expensive. That being said, if McDonald's ever brings back the McRib, my answer will change to 17 fast food meals a week, at least until I end up in the hospital for adult onset diabetes. Thanks for your question. And thank all of you who support America Uncovered with a dollar or more per episode. We really can't take the risk of covering controversial topics unless we continue to get your support to pay our staff. So visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered to learn how you can support the show. Thank you for watching America Uncovered. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.